it's an artery molecule to invite a sort of flat. Do you know what time the others are getting here? Well, they should be here any time now. Well, I really enjoy a game of trivial pursuit, don't you? Oh, absolutely. And of course you hardly ever lose. <laughs> You're always a bit of a winner. That's right. I am the reigning champion, and mm. I intend to keep that title for as long as possible. Yes. you'd be here. I thought you'd be too busy doing your open university coursework. Well, I'd like to keep tabs on my pals, you know, pop round, see how you're all doing, how you're all surviving, that sort of thing. Anyway, we're very pleased to have you here, Tony. I'm surprised you could tear yourself away from your study for a change. It's Christmas, isn't it? So I'm sort of taking a break from writing all those millions of essays that we've got to do for me OU studies. And you too, Richard. Haven't seen you for a while. Come to try your luck against me again. I don't need to try, Michael. Luck has nothing to do with it. You're sure of yourself, aren't you? <laughs> oh, you may be champion at the moment, Michael, but I'm sure that can change after today. So this is all of us that's playing, is it? Well, of course, we would have asked Nigel to join us, but he's visiting his family for Christmas. Of course, there was another friend of ours we asked, but he didn't want to know, did he, Mike? Yes, well, he's got better things to do, hasn't he? Like going off on his own for a few days. So who's this, then? You've never heard of the Sopsha Rambler? Who the hell is the solitary rambler? He's a keen walker, who in the main prefers walking on his own. That's exactly what he'd be doing at the moment. Here at Speechley, I was at the point where the River Wye ends and runs into the Severn Estuary. The first Severn Road Bridge was built in the 1960s by a company for whom my mother worked for a time. The Queen was credited for being the first woman to have stepped onto this bridge when it was first opened in 1966, but in fact it was actually my mum who was the first. As I gazed up at the huge catwalks that swept right down from the very tops of the towers, I was shivering at the thought of what mum had recently told me about them. You mean to tell me that you actually climbed up those catwalks? Yes, I walked along those catwalks before the bridge was completed. In other words, before any of the sections of the road were up, it was just a straight drop from the catwalk down to the river. <sighs> what a horrible thought. How did you manage to do it? Well, actually, it was like walking through a tunnel of wire mesh, so there was no danger of actually falling. Yeah, but I still don't think I could have climbed up there. What's the first day of the week? Sunday. Yeah. 
You jammy sod. <laughs> You're pretty good at this game, aren't you? Don't worry, Mike. I'll get my own back the next time. OK, Richard. We'll have a rematch very soon. So you were telling me about this solitary rambler guy. Doesn't he like mixing with people, then? Only when he chooses. He really doesn't like having to fit in with other people. He goes his own way. Yeah, I remember him now. I've never met him, but wasn't he that guy you wrote about when you were at college? That's right. I never realised my work had become so well known. Oh, you know how things get around. When you're at college, they get spread around really quickly. He's the one who thinks he's the great long-distance rambler who can walk endlessly and never get tired. He's beginning to piss me off when I hear about him now. He's just an old git who thinks he's a superhero. It's rather an exaggeration, Richard. Patrick also believes that he can walk anywhere without getting lost. People have tried to prove him wrong in the past, but the efforts have always been defeated. That's because they've never used the right tactics. He's gone walking again. Do you know where he's gone? Well, he did tell me, actually. He said he was going to do a very personal and nostalgic trip, back to the area of his own origins. Here in Sedbury was where Nan, my paternal grandmother, lived after she divorced my grandfather. Sadly, she is no longer with us, but I have many fond memories of her. Nan was the member of my paternal family with whom I had the most regular contact, and she was also the closest. Now, these are the places he said he'd be visiting today. Did he say whether he'd be in this area tomorrow? Yes, yeah, so we'll be going to these villages today, and tomorrow here, uh, here, and here, I think. And then uh, we'll be going to these places finish up here. Michael, I don't suppose you have a recent photograph of him, do you? Yes, I think I've got one somewhere. Just, just a minute. Hang on. I see. Are you doing anything in the next couple of days? Nothing in particular. Why would you ask? There you go. Oh, that's the most recent photograph I've got. Why do you want it anyway? You know him? Well, Michael, it's not for my benefit. Do you mind if I borrow it for a couple of days? Well, of course not. What do you plan to do, Richard? I stopped the car at Wollaston as I wanted to take a detour for a while and I thought I would be able to see more if I walked this bit. I hadn't been up here for years. I just wanted to see if I remembered it. I used to come up here to Wollaston Village regularly during the earliest years of my life. Up until the age of about three, I came up here a lot with my parents, although I have only vague memories. This is Wollaston Woodside, where Nan and Grandad lived when they were still married, long before Nan moved to Sedbury. If only I could remember exactly where the house was. I'm sure it was up here on the right somewhere. That's it. Yes, that's Nan's house. Or at least that's where her house was. Well, it's been modified whatever since I came up here as a toddler, but yes, that's definitely where our old house was. 
my God, it's all coming back to me now. It was such a shame that Nan moved away from here. I think it was the nicest house she ever lived in. The lane continues on up the hill before it eventually ascends into a village known as Hulesfield. That was quite a way to go though, so I decided not to carry on up the lane, especially as I still had to walk back into Wollaston where I had left my car. It had been really nostalgic coming up here today though. This next village holds the most nostalgia for me because it was where I've spent the very first years of my life. I lived here before I moved to Chepstow. When my mum and dad got married in the mid 60s, they bought a house here in Alvington and six months after they moved here, I was born. I lived in Alvington with both my mum and my dad for approximately three years before my parents separated and moved away from here. I do have some memories of my time here, even if they are extremely vague. It's been over 30 years since I lived here. I sometimes wonder if I dreamt it, as my memories are so dim and long distant. I can't believe I used to live here. It's like a different world. And yet I can remember this place quite well. Now I know I could have only been three years at the oldest, but I can remember being taken up and down that lane. We possibly could have gone to Nans at Wollaston Woodside that way, although it's not a particularly direct route. So why else would he have gone down there? Leading off the A48 is Clanner Road, so I decided to take a wander along it to see if it could jog any memories for me. There is one thing I remember distinctly about this lane when I lived here in Alvington. Telegraph poles. There used to be telegraph poles all the way down the side of the lane. Funny how I remember an old thing like that. Telegraph poles were something that always made a big impression on me when I was really small. They were everywhere then. Today there aren't so many around, as most of them seem to have been taken down and have been replaced with underground telephone cables. I always thought it was a great shame, because for me, telegraph poles were real landmarks, adding their own kind of atmosphere to the countryside. I certainly recognize this junction. That way leads to Wollaston Woodside and Nan's house. I'm not quite so familiar with these two roads, but I remember this crossroads junction. And I seem to recall approaching it from that way. I wonder where we could have been. I see that telegraph pole is still here, although it's not how it used to be.
Eventually I walked on and decided to take the lane directly opposite. Although I knew exactly where it would lead, I could not remember why, as a very small child, I would have come along this lane to Alvington via Clanner Crossroads. Therefore, I put those thoughts behind me and just enjoyed the natural beauty of this local countryside. When the lane eventually reached the top of its long dragging climb, I arrived in Hewell's Field. This village is full of beauty, with a delightful sense of welcome. The local village church dates back to Saxon times, although there is some evidence that an even older place of worship may have stood here. Between 1971 and 1985, the church underwent a loving and faithful restoration involving the whole parish, and it certainly was worth the effort looking at it today. The lane ended just beyond Hewelsfield on the main Chepstow to St Rebels Road. I thought about continuing down the lane opposite to Brockwear, but time was getting on again and I needed to get back to Alvington where I'd left my car again. Once I was back there, I would drive to Chepstow where I was staying tonight. I would then continue with the next part of this trip rediscovering the district of my origins first thing tomorrow morning. So are we going to have another game of Trivial Pursuit tomorrow then, Michael? No, of course we can. Presumably you'd like to have a chance to beat me, would you? Here you are, Izzy. You better keep hold of that photograph. Did you make note of the places you was going to? Yeah, I've got it all written down here. Good. Tomorrow morning, before you set off, can you come round? We need to talk privately about something. You two not going to be joining us in our game tomorrow then? I will be, but Izzy's are going out for a couple of days. She's doing something for me, isn't that right, Izzy? Is it alright for us to keep at your place then, Mark? Yeah, fine. Help yourself. I've got some uh, bread in the fridge so you can make yourself some toast in the morning. You haven't got any cornflakes, have you, Mark? So where exactly are you off to tomorrow, Izzy? I'm just off to Gloucestershire for a couple of days, sir. But you better ask Richard what it's about. Well, Richard? I've had enough of this solitary rambler. He's a bit full of himself and he's going to be taken down a peg or two. Then, Richard, what's so secret that you wanted me to call round before I went to Gloucestershire? Why wouldn't you say anything in front of Anthony and Michael? Because my plan doesn't involve the other two, that's why. What you're going to do today involves breaking the law and they mustn't know about it. What? You want me to break the law for you? Don't panic. No one can possibly find out if you carry out the plan exactly as I tell you. So what is it exactly you want me to do, Richard? From Michael's information yesterday, we'll know where he is today and tomorrow. What I want you to do is to find him and follow him, but make sure he doesn't see you. What if he does see me? Oh, just be natural. Act like a local or something. Oh, well, that'd be very easy. Right, and what then? Then, when at the right time and he's unprepared, administer this. What the hell is that? It's a knockout drug. Use it when there's nobody around. You want me to inject him with a drug? No wonder you didn't want to say anything in front of Tony and Michael. Why can't you do this? Why are you sending me out to do your dirty work? It's your plan. Simple, he's never met you, but he knows me. If he sees me in the area, he'll get suspicious. That gets you off the hook, doesn't it? Right, so what do I do after I've administered the drug? Continue to follow him when the drug takes effect. This is what I want you to do. The next village along from Alvington is Aylburton, another place I can remember very well from my childhood, but it has no major significance to me other than that it is just one of those places that I passed through a lot. I decided that I was going to do the same as I had done yesterday 
which was to leave the car and take a nice long walk along one of the country lanes that led out of the village. I had chosen to walk this lane today because it was another route I can remember from my younger days. Some parts seemed very familiar as I passed through, and yet others I couldn't seem to remember at all. I have very fixed visions of these places I remember visiting as a young boy, but as I pass through them today, they appear strangely different to those long distant childhood memories. It's odd the way your mind plays tricks on you. Hello? Is anybody there? Yeah, I recognise this junction. We often used to come from St Breville's, up there to get to Bream down there. Look, whoever you are, come out. It's not very friendly hiding from me, is it? Unless you're ashamed of something. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to scare you. What are you doing? You know, just strolling around. Yes, well, if you'll excuse me, I've got to get on. Bream is a sizeable village that rests on the edge of the Forest of Dean. Like many small places in the area, it continues to grow and evolve as it is becoming increasingly overpopulated due to the constant building of new houses. <sighs> I remember this hill very well. And I recall the telegraph poles that used to go up it. My God, I can remember it so vividly. As though I were 30 years younger again. When I finally got back to Ale Burton, I was feeling absolutely exhausted. So many memories had come flooding back over the last couple of days, I was becoming overwhelmed. There was still one more place I wanted to visit today though, so I continued on my way towards more memories. The next place I came to was Lydney the town where the Forest of Dean and the River Severn unite. I have a small affection for Lydney because it is the town in which I was nearly born. 
When my parents had been living in Alvington for about six months, Dad brought Mum to the hospital here in Lydney because she was due to have a baby. Unfortunately, as it was only a cottage hospital, it did not have the facilities that Mum needed. Therefore, when I was born, it was in a different town that had a larger hospital with better facilities. I was beside the Severn Estuary again when this road ended at Lydney Harbour. Here I was suddenly overcome with dizzy spells. What's going on? How did I get here? I was standing beside Lily Harbour just now, and now I'm here. Where is here? How did I get here? What the hell's going on? This is Purton. This is where the old railway bridge used to span across the Severn. Now how on earth did I suddenly get to be here, from Lydney Harbour? I had no idea what had happened to me. Purton was several miles up the River Severn from Lydney Harbour, so it was as though, without even remembering the journey between these two places, I had just travelled in the blink of an eye what should probably have been at least an hour's walk. Weird. I was feeling quite dizzy, so I just put it down to that, plus the fact that I was probably extremely tired from this nostalgic trip, and that my mind was becoming groggy because of it. I soon found myself in Gatcombe, which is beside a small inlet on the River Severn, 
and was once the port of Blakeney. By the time I got to this hamlet, called Etlo, I was feeling very ill. My first instinct was to get back to Lydney, where I knew my car was waiting for me. Although in my present condition, I wasn't sure if I was well enough to drive. same treatment tomorrow. I had not slept particularly well in the car last night, but there was just no way that I could have driven anywhere the state I was in. Still, at least my illness from yesterday had gone. I had intended this to be the last day of my journey exploring the district of my origins. I was unaware though, at this time, that circumstances I would encounter during the course of today would force me to make one or two alterations to my plans. At the bottom of this steep hill, I found myself passing through Blakeney. This I've always found an interesting place, because the village is almost completely surrounded by steep hills, so it is hidden away in the bottom of a huge deep dip. The locals must be very fit if they have to walk in and out of this village. The next major port of call I would be visiting would be R, a small village in a very remote location on flat low-lying ground beside the River Severn. At times, when the tide is extremely high, even parts of the surrounding lanes get completely flooded, so ultimately the village becomes a kind of island, cut off from the rest of civilization, not somewhere I'd ever visit alone on foot. I didn't have to worry about that today though as I drove along the lane toward it, because I knew that I was in the safety of my car. What is wrong with this thing now?
That's it then. What the hell am I going to do now? I can't get the car started. And I don't know anything about cars to repair the fault myself. I'll have to re ring the car breakdown service. Now, the trouble is, where's the nearest phone box? Blake will be too far away by now. So the nearest place will be... Oh, no. I'll have to go to R on foot now. I've got no choice. R is a pretty little village, so I enjoyed a quiet wander around, and luckily there was no sign of high tide threatening to flood the surrounding area. Anyway, I managed to find a call box to sort my car out. I had arranged for the breakdown service to tow my car to a garage to be repaired. I was determined, however, to carry on with my journey with or without the car, so I'd collect it from the garage at the end of the day. In the meantime then, I chose to have a quick look around R. Sorry, but haven't I seen you somewhere before? No, I don't think so. I'd remember otherwise. Wait a minute. Yes. I saw you yesterday, just as so Bream. Don't you remember? Yeah, yeah, you were that bloke walking down the lane. I remember. Um, fancy seeing you here. Small world, isn't it? Yes, isn't it? What are you doing here? You know, just travelling around. I like it here. It's, uh, it's nice. Including out in the back of beyond, like here in R. You're here, aren't you? Yes. Yes, I suppose so. Well then, I'll leave you to it then. Goodbye. It's me again. I think he is suspicious, you know. That doesn't matter now. You can't possibly know what's happened to him yesterday. That's the main thing. Yeah, but how am I going to get to him today? I don't think the trick I used yesterday will work again. And then you really will know what's going on. Well, I'll think of something by the next time you call. You said that his car broke down earlier, didn't you? Well, that means he won't have his car, so I'll have to do a lot more walking. So I'll get more tired quickly. Therefore, we can use that to our advantage. He doesn't get tired, though. He's the solitary rambler. Don't you start making him sound like a superhero, for God's sake. Remember why we're out here, Izzy. He'll get tired, don't you worry, and then at the right moment we'll have him.
by late morning, I arrived at Newnham on Severn. It is in a wonderful position, with its church on the cliff tops that overhang the river. The village itself, despite being located on the busy A48, is very picturesque with its tree-lined high street and the clock tower. I decided to telephone the garage to where my car had been towed. I was informed that it would not be ready until the following morning. That of course meant that I would be without my car now for the rest of the day, and I would need to find somewhere to stay tonight. On the positive side, it did mean that I could have a drink, now that I wouldn't be driving any more today. After a short stop in the pub at Broad Oak, I continued onwards. I was feeling much more relaxed now after having drunk two pints of cider. From this point onwards, I would be walking through countryside that I was not quite so familiar with. Although I have become more acquainted with this area over recent years, I do not know it from my childhood. Despite this, my ultimate destination has a great deal of relevance to my origins. I stopped to cast my mind back again, to the time when I was living with both my parents. I can't help imagining how different my life could be now had they not separated. They just weren't happy together unfortunately, so it was inevitable that the decision would finally be made to end it. Well, therefore we went our separate ways and uh, eventually got divorced. And we went back to Chepstow to live with Granny and Grandad. So didn't my dad care about me then? Oh yes, he was very upset at the thought of losing his son. And just before we left Alvington, I promised that he could see you regularly, which he did at first, but then the visits got less and less until they stopped completely. Some father he was. I arrived at Westbury on Severn by lunchtime. Like Newnham, it lies on the busy A48, but is nevertheless a very pretty place. My main priority now was of course to go to the pub. We're in a place called Westbury on Severn. Patrick's just going into the local pub. That's the solitary rambler all right. He's well known for going for pub calls in the middle of his walking expeditions. What do you want me to do now then, Richard? You wait for him to come out again. He's coming out of the pub now. He looks rather pissed. That could help us a great deal. Don't let him out of your sight. I had a real problem with drinking alcohol. I would be so cheerful and happy one minute, and then the next, I was the most depressed person in the world. It's as though someone just flicks a switch. Today was a perfect example. I had drunk too much cider, and now I was feeling extremely depressed thinking about my father. It is a subject that upsets me when I'm sober, but after I've been drinking, the depression just trebles. I was thinking about the time when I was still very young and I had stopped hearing from my dad. It used to make me very upset because I thought that he didn't care about me any longer. 
Do you remember when I was a teenager? I went through a phase when I used to go on the bus to visit him. He usually seemed pleased to see me. Yes, but you stopped after a while, didn't you? Because you realised that the only time you ever saw him was when you made the effort. Yes. After that, I thought, sod it. He doesn't bother with me, so why should I with him? Yeah, and over the years, you've only seen him a few times, just when you've happened to bump into him. Yeah, the last time I saw him was at Jim's wedding last year. We hardly spoke. Yeah, well, after the way he's treated you over the years, perhaps it's for the best. In that case, you'd better give it to him now. Make sure he doesn't wake up too early, don't we? Don't worry, Izzy, it will make him feel a little nauseous, but he'll be okay. Oh, God! Not again! What is happening? I lay down to rest in a field on a hill. It was also beside a much wider part of the Severn. I assume that still is the Blue Seven. It must be. I don't remember coming this far upstream. What the hell is going on? Traffic. There's a main road nearby. Probably the A48. Well, in that case, I should be able to work out where I am. There's a church. That will tell me for sure where this is. for that. I thought this is probably where I was. Oh, God, I feel sick. There's definitely something funny going on here. I lay down to rest in a field near Westbury, and now all of a sudden I find myself here in Minsterworth. I wasn't completely sure what had been happening to me, but I had my suspicions. The one thing I did know for sure was that I felt really sick, and that because of that, there was no way I was going to make the next place I wanted to visit by the end of the day. I could of course catch a bus, and luckily I knew there was a regular service to where I was heading. A bus did come along in only a matter of minutes, in which I was able to sit down in comfort and unwind. Before long, I was entering the city of Gloucester, my final destination on this journey. More importantly, it is the place where it all began for me, the city where I was born. When it was discovered that Lydney Hospital did not have the right facilities when Mum was in labour, she was brought here to Gloucester's Royal Hospital where I was finally born. In this respect, I have developed a great fondness for Gloucester over the years and have visited it time and time again. 
The city's strategic position on the River Severn has made it an important place in British history. From it, first the Romans and then the Normans launched attacks on Wales. Edward the Confessor held court here, a custom followed by William the Conqueror. In Roman times, Gloucester was known as Gleaven, and the courses of its original four roads remain, fanning out from the city centre, taking their names in the gates and the wall to which they once led. I was feeling a lot better after a good walk around the city. My task now, though, was to find somewhere to stay tonight. Therefore, I went into the Tourist Information Centre, from where I got booked into a guest house for the night. The next thing I had to think about was collecting my car the following morning. When it broke down near R earlier today, it had been towed away to a garage here in Gloucester, so I would not have far to walk to pick it up tomorrow. That meant that I could just go to my guest house now and relax. As I started making my way towards it, by pure chance, I suddenly came across the opportunity to get to the bottom of what had been happening to me over the last couple of days. Hello again. Fancy meeting you. Uh, no, I wouldn't if I were you. Only makes you seem all the more suspicious, don't you think? I don't know what you're talking about. What do you mean? Don't take me for a prank, darling. You know damn well what I'm talking about. Yesterday, I was walking beside Lydney Harbour, and the next minute I'm in Perton, which is quite a few miles away from Lydney. And today, when I was walking near Westbury, I go to sleep in a field on a hill, and all of a sudden I found myself five bloody miles away in Minsterworth. Now you just tell what the hell is going to to me. It's only supposed to be a bit of fun, that's all. Oh, that's all it was, was it? Oh well, then I apologise for not having a sense of humour. What did you do? Knock me out? Well, I might as well tell you now, mightn't I? I was told to follow you, which I've been doing since yesterday morning. I first spotted you in Alberton, from where I followed you, just to make sure that it was actually you. It was just unfortunate for me that you heard me moving around down that lane near Bream, so I had no choice but to show myself and carry on naturally as though I was just passing by. Sorry, didn't mean to scare you. What are you doing? You know, just strolling around. Yes, well... If you'll excuse me, I've got to get on. Later in the day, when I followed you to Lydney, I came across my first opportunity to try out the plan that was devised. You were standing by a level crossing near the railway station. Whilst you were engaged in watching the train pass, I managed to inject a knockout drug into your wrist. Christ, you stupid cow! Do you realize how dangerous that could have been? No wonder I felt so bloody sick. I then followed you down to the harbour, where I noticed you were having dizzy spells. Once you had passed out, I carried you to my car and drove to a place some way from the harbour. I then carried you to a quiet lane, and placed you standing upright against a hedge, so that when you awoke, you would just believe that you'd been feeling giddy, and would no, have no idea that you had become unconscious and that you'd been transported during that period. I was then able to observe your confusion without you knowing it, and to see if you could find your way back to where you wanted to go. Well, it didn't take me very long to discover the loads in Perth, did it? No, but it was fun watching you try to work out what was going on. So how come you allowed me to discover you in Ireland this morning? Well, it was hard trying to keep out of your sight all the time I was following you, but it kept you guessing, didn't it? Yes. I assume you drugged me again today while I rested near Westbury. That's right. I noticed you had visited two pubs in the afternoon and look at, were looking a bit the worse for drink. I took that as the next opportunity to transport you to Minsterworth, whilst you were oblivious. It was fun watching your confusion again. It was worth the effort. Oh, well, I'm glad you think so. You seem surprised to find me here in Gloucester, though. I assume, because of the condition I was in today, that you didn't think I would make it any further than Minsterworth. Well, I knew you were on your way here, as I noticed you catching a bus from Minsterworth. But Gloucester is a big place. I didn't expect to run into you here, I must admit. If you hadn't, I probably would never have sussed you or your plan. Although, you knew where I, who I was and where I was going these last few days. That can't be a coincidence. And there's only one person who knew where I was going. Surely Michael isn't part of his plans? No, he isn't, but he did tell us where to find you. 
Us? Oh, so there was someone else involved then. Well, you didn't think this was all my plan, did you? Oh, I see. You're part of the book now, because you're unable to take the blame for your own actions. Look, I may have carried out the plan, but I didn't devise it. I was just doing what I was told. So you just did the dirty work, okay? Okay, then. You just tell me who planned this. His name is Richard Dang. We all knew about the solitary ramp, how you can walk such long distances and find your way around so easily. So he wanted to take you down a peg or two because he was fed up with you and your ego. Richard Down? He planned this? Well, that's a bit of a shock. I never thought that he of all people would resort to this just because he's decided he's got a problem with my abilities. Richard and I went to Michael's place the other day to play Trivial Pursuit. It's something he's been playing a lot of recently. You just came up in conversation and Richard started to get a bee in his body about you. I already knew about you through Michael's college projects. They've become widely known, you know. I'm not so sure that's a good thing anymore, you know. So, Richard's into playing Trivial Pursuit around right my house, you see? I ought to turn you both in, you know, for abusing me with drugs. Now, I know that Michael doesn't mind a bit of fun himself, but I doubt if he would be exactly over the moon if he realised what extreme measures you two had gone to. Go on, get out of here. Go home to Richard. You tell him the joke's over now, and I'll be looking for him. Tell him it, it will take a great deal more than pumping drugs inside me in order to get the better on me. Don't let him get the better of you. Sod him. That's easier said than done, Mum. He's still my dad. He's nothing to you now. He's never bothered with you, and things aren't going to change now. You've got to get on with your life and forget about him. Why the hell should I? I'm not the guilty party here. He's the one who never bothered, so why should I have to suffer because of him? Well, I don't really know what you expect. He's become a stranger to you. I haven't been married to the man for 30 years, so I don't really know what the problem is. Oh, I don't bloody know. What am I supposed to do? I'm caught in the middle, aren't I? There's my dad on one side who doesn't care about me, and you on the other side who's always shouting at me. What have I ever done to deserve this? Oh, I'm not shouting at you. I just still get very angry with him, because he still manages to upset you. And it's not as if he didn't care. It's just he was so always so bloody thoughtless. But I'll tell you something. You've had a much better upbringing without him. You're caring, you've got a nice personality, and you certainly aren't thoughtless like he is. And I think you've managed much better without him over the years. You were right, Mum, that's the trouble. I have managed very well without him all these years. I don't need him. It's his loss, as they say. If only he knew what such a colourful life his son needs now. Anyway, I've got a more immediate problem to deal with. to Isabel then, Richard. I thought she was going to be joining us today. So did I. Expect she'll turn up any time soon. I suppose she's tired after a few days away, Tony. Have you seen her since she got back, Richard? No, not yet. Oh, yeah, she sent her away to Gloucestershire for a couple of days. I wonder how she's got on. Hello? Oh, hi, Izzy. We were just wondering what happened to you. You what? Just a minute. Hang on, Izzy. Michael, I need to talk to Izzy in private. Don't mind if I pop out, do you? No, no, that's fine. No. You go ahead, Richard. That's odd, isn't it? What's going on? I don't know. Whatever it is, which it doesn't look very happy about. What the hell happened, Izzy? What? That's impossible. How could you have found out my plan was flawless? No, 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 no. I realise it was my idea, Izzy, but you were the one carrying it out. You got careless. All right, all right. There's nothing we can do now. We'll talk about it another time. I'll see you when you get here. Oh, 
Uh, is everything all right, Richard? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Everything's fine. Thanks, Mike. What was wrong with Izzy then, Richard? Um, she's feeling a bit stressed. Of course, breaking down. All oh, right. She can't make it then. Oh no 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 no! Her car is fine now. She, she's just phoned in to say she'll be arriving later. And you needed to talk to her in private about that. No, there were a couple of other minor issues, but nothing for you to worry about. Well, there you go. She's got here after all. Good evening. I heard that there was a game of trivial pursuit being held. 